Hey fellas, it's a bright Saturday morning where I'm at. I need to get my sunglasses on. But anyway, the plane's going together. Uh, it's been a little bit since my last video, but uh, it, I have been working on it. It is just about ready for paint, which will be the subject of the next video. And uh, I unfortunately, I had to close up the canopy just because the fit wasn't real, real good. It's still not perfect, but it's uh, it's uh, a ton better than what it would have been. Anyway, uh, this is going to focus in on the missiles, and uh, the the owner wanted a specific set of uh, missiles, I guess that were that were on it when when he worked on the plane. And I had to order some aftermarket ones. I bought some brass and resin uh, AIM one twenties and some AIM nine Sidewinders. Now I'm only using, uh, he wanted four AIM-120s and I'm only using two of the, the, the resin ones just because the first set had kind of botched up and they're real difficult to work with. Uh, the AIM-9 Sidewinders I tried working on, uh, working with the resin ones, but <laughs> they're difficult. Uh, you know, and, and so I ended up uh, pulling some AIM-9 Sidewinders from my Tamiya 148 F14. And they're pretty close. They're they're real detailed, and I think they look pretty good. Oh man, that's a good pop. But anyway, uh, this is going to focus on on how I do those. And uh, you know, I've been working on these for the last three and a half days uh, on these on these missiles, trying to get them done and get them magnetized and and uh, on the plane. So I'll quit yapping, and you can kind of see how I how I do my my missiles. I know of. I've done a couple, I think I did a video on, on how I paint my bombs. Uh, obviously, uh, missiles are kind of a, a different deal. You kind of deal with them differently. So that's what this video is about. And uh, let's get on with it. Now, the owner wanted specific missiles put on here that matched what uh, was typically on the, the F-15. So I've got a couple of AIM-120As which are these, and these are the kit parts, and they're these are the kit missiles, and they're really good. Unfortunately, he wanted four, and there's only two. So what I've done is I've bought some of these Edward Resin uh, 120As, and they're kind of a pain in the butt in that uh, they've got these little resin fins that, that fit on there, and you have to use super glue. They come in in... Uh, Several pieces. You've got the, sh the the middle part, the shaft, or whatever you want to call it, and then you've got the the head. As you can see here, Let's zoom in a little bit, and then you've got these little uh, parts on the back, and those glue on, and you just kind of got to get them flat. I did pretty good with these, and then I, I got them on there pretty well. But then when I went to get the fins on, and if you've ever tried to cut small resin thin fins out. It takes a little time. So I've got the next set cut out. But uh, trying to get those on glued straight with super glue, it's a pain in the butt. And look at that mess that I made. So I'm probably going to scratch these. So I'll probably end up using the, the kit missiles, the two kit missiles that I got. And then hopefully I'll do a better job on this set of of uh, uh, Edward Brass and whatever they're called uh, resin missiles. All right, so these are actually turning out better, and I'm hope hope I can capture this on video. So what I'm doing before what I was doing is I was taking one of these fins and I was dipping them in the CA glue. And I've got a mixture of thin and a little bit of thick just to kind of thicken it up. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking my little glue swabber and I'm putting it and I drilled out these holes just a little bit to, to give me a little more leeway. And I'm just putting a tiny bit of glue in these holes. Then I come back with my fin. Got to rearrange these on my thumb so I can pick them up. Oh no, what did I do? Okay, I think that's it right there. And then I take it, st 
stick it in there and try to align it with the rear. Oh, that didn't work. Try to align it with the rear fin so it aligns. Now the, the missile is a little bit, looks like a little bit warped and you'll get that with resin. But once I get these on there, I can kind of play with it. But you can see there, eh, this back one might be a little off. But I found this is a much easier way to do it than what I was doing. Um, so I, I basically got the rear fins on there and aligned with my Mark I eyeball, as my British friends would say. Okay. Ah. Now I did lose one of these when I was doing the other one and I had to cut out a fin with plastic card. But since I'm not going to use them, it's not going to make much of a difference. Okay, and that one aligned pretty well. Getting them off. You know, it's it's not too bad. Uh, it's kind of a little bit, but I think once it gets painted and once I put it on there, it's not something that's going to be that noticeable if one is just slightly off. Um, also, what I do, what I've started doing with my missiles is I'll take a little drill bit and I'll drill in, drill a hole in the in the rear. And that way I can take one of my long toothpicks, stick it in there, and it will allow me to paint it without having to touch it. So these actually turned out much better than the last ones did. So I'm going to use these two and these two for my uh, 120s. And then I've got, uh, I've got some Tamiya... Uh, AIM 7s, I believe they are, which I'm going to use. And I've already got those magnetized so they fit where I want them to go. And then uh, I'm going to work on the the resin sidewinders. I've actually got four of those and I only need two. So I got a little, uh, I can make some mistakes. So once I get these all done, then we'll get to painting them. All right. I've decided that the resin... AIM-9 Sidewinders are not <laughs> something that I'm, I plan to tackle. Uh, the, the fins were really thin, so I went ahead and pulled out these Tamiya ones from my F-14 Tomcat. And they're, they're really well done. I, don't, I think once they're painted up, to be honest with you, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But one of the issues that you run into when you mount missiles that aren't a part of the kit is how do you mount them on the plane? Now you can see here, <coughs> I've got already got the magnets in place where they're going to be mounted, but I need to put corresponding magnets on the missiles. Now how I do that is, since these are pretty much flush with the, with the body, I'll take another magnet, throw it on there, and then I'll take some red paint, And I'll just dab a dot of red paint in the center of that magnet. Okay. And I get my missile. And based on where the location is, I think this should be correct. I didn't press down on the back one well enough. It should be pretty close. I want it pretty much dead on where I want it. Okay, now that looks like that's going to be perfect. So I'll let the paint dry 
and then uh, I'll drill my my holes, insert my magnets, and it should fit on uh, where where it's mounted. All right, fellas. So I've got all my missiles painted up. They're all magnetized and ready to go. See, so we can zoom in a little bit. Now I've got them painted and put a clear coat on them. And as you'll notice, the fins, um, what I did is I sprayed these in uh, Mr. Surfacer, Mr. Finishing Surfacer, my, my primer. And that's a pretty close color to, to what the missiles are. So I just left it with the primer and then I, I obviously taped off and, and sprayed the nose cones. And then I hand painted the fins. And if you can see, like I'd kind of talked before on the cockpit, I didn't, uh, I, I, thinned, I thinned the paint out and I used Mr. or uh, Vallejo, some Vallejo gray color to kind of match what you see here on the picture. And if you can see on the fins, they're not like one, I think they're metallic. They're some kind of a, um, well, like a steel or aluminum or something. But uh, they're not one color. So I just thinned out the paint and kind of dabbled it on to get that, that uh, look. Now, when they're shiny, I mean, obviously they look fake. But uh, we're going to try to add a little bit more realism. Um, this is the way I typically do it. So I, I got some... Ammo MIG uh, blue black panel line wash, and I'm gonna add some of this to it. I'm let's see, I'm gonna grab some other colors as well. Just so, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some panel line washes to kind of highlight some of the features. Mm. Ah, that's good coffee. Get some of my, my brushes. I'm not really prepared here. So I'm going to take this is kind of diluted. And I'm just going to kind of go over this and play with this. And I might be able to get this done all in one step. And I don't want to have to like wipe off a bunch because <clears throat> when you go to do missiles, uh, if you do a panel line wash and you have to go and, and wipe off a bunch of stuff, you're going to snag and get your Q-tip on a bunch of, on, on, on all the little parts that stick out. And especially with, can't really tell which is which. Uh, I think this is, nope, nope. These are the resin ones and uh, I think they're gonna be kind of fragile. So what I'm doing is I'm just diluting my blue black in thinner and I'm just kind of playing with it. And I want to kind of dirty these up. And while I'm doing that, it's going to get in the panel lines. We can zoom in and see what this looks like. And I can come back. And then this way, I can come back and just wipe off just a little bit and I don't have to get in every little nook and cranny because I haven't like just poured it on. I can come back with a Q-tip and kind of touch up if it's a little too dirty. All right, so I've given this just a little bit of time to kind of uh, kind of get where it's going to go. And so now what I'm going to do is I kind of get my brush with a little bit of, clean out my brush with a little bit of thinner. And it's still kind of wet. So now what I'm going to do is just take the brush and kind of move this around and take away 
uh, where I want it. So that way when it's completely dried, I shouldn't have to be wiping anything off. Because now I can kind of get to, to where I want. Let's see if we can get some pictures here to kind of see. You can see here how they're kind of grimy. That's the kind of look that I'm going for. So I'm just taking my brush, it's kind of cleaned out. And I'm just moving and taking away. And this way I'm not getting any hairs from my Q-tip into any place. And I can kind of just put the color where I want it. And again, I don't want it to be really grimy. I just kind of want to add just a little bit of grime and dirt. And where it's pooled up in some of the crevices, I can kind of wipe that out. And I can kind of touch and stipple and And then if I still am not happy or want to add or subtract, I can still do that once it's dried. I can just re-wet my brush and move it around or, you know, I can take a Q-tip or cotton bud and wipe away. Take a look at this one. As you can see, we've got, you know, a little bit of grime up here on the front. Just kind of all over. And it's not in your face, but it's still there. And then once I throw the, the flat coat on it, these are really going to pop. I sound like a dork when I say pop. So I'm going to continue on kind of playing with these. And then once they dry, if I need to add anything else, I'll do that. Uh, otherwise, I'll just probably throw a flat coat on there and then add some um, bare metal foil to some of these to give it uh, a little more pop. We're going to pop the hell out of these things. All right. Catch you in a minute. All right. So I'm finishing up the missiles. <clears throat> and I've added some matte aluminum around this section here to kind of match what I saw on the pictures on the Sidewinder. Also what I'm doing is I'm adding some Ushi van der Rosten powder. This is the chrome type. And I'm taking just a little like makeup applicator and I'm going along, Just it just takes a little bit and this applicator holds on to, uh, to a lot of this. And I'm going along these fins where it's supposed to be, I guess, a, a steel or aluminum. And I'm just kind of dabbing it on there and getting a little bit of a metallic sheen. But I'm not covering up all that, all that uh, paint work. I'm just kind of rubbing it in so you get an idea that that's metal. Kind of rubbing along there's there's a little bit of a uh, like a raised portion where the 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 fins kind of come out and then go back in and I'm kind of hitting that area and along the edges just to kind of highlight that and it doesn't take much just kind of rub it And again, this really isn't like an in-your-face. You know, you can dry brush it, but I think this Ushi van der Rosten powder kind of gives a little bit of a more realistic metal sheen.
And then I'm also going to come in in the uh, the ends and hit it with a little bit of orange mixed with some some black just to kind of darken it up to replicate what I saw in the pictures. You can see that right there. So that's what I'm going to try to do as well. So I'm going to get on with this and then I'll flash up some pictures. 